So how fast is SpaceX Starlink after the recent DISH recalibration? Let's go check it out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. Coming to the end of some Fireside, it's sad. <laughs> I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. You guys have requested this, so we're doing it. You wanted to know what speeds am I getting as of late? And there was a recent adjustment to the dish that happened. Whereas the dish used to point, let's say north, northeast for quite some time. And then about six, eight months ago, I told you guys about the dish then moving to east, northeast. So it was more east than it is north. Now, I speculated why this was happening at the time, and I told you guys that I think that the reason is I'm on the coast. And since I'm on the East Coast, what SpaceX Starlink started doing was anyone on the East Coast was pointing their dish over the ocean. Now, some of you guys would be like, why in the hell would they do that? Well, if you think about it, all of those birds or those satellites that are flying overhead that are actually over the ocean, who's using them? No one, right? maybe a couple of airplanes, maybe a boat here and there, and that is it. So there is minimal traffic on those satellites, which is great. So if you're on the East Coast, what they did was point your dish towards the ocean. Now, if you're on the West Coast, I confirmed it with a lot of you guys. Thank you so much for being here and doing that. This is a community, right? It's not just this talking head. We are working together to hopefully get a better internet experience through SpaceX Starlink, through T-Mobile, through whatever. And once again, I thank you. Now, a lot of you said from the West Coast said, yeah, Joe, my dish used to point like West, Northwest, right around there, or even Northwest to pick up signal, but as of late, this was like six, eight months ago, it is now pointing over the ocean, but their ocean. So instead of pointing over the Atlantic, which would be east, it's pointing over the Pacific, which is west. So their dish now is pointed west. Now, once again, those are for the people that are sitting on the coast. Now, as of a few days ago, my dish has rotated once again. The last time it rotated, we went from a perfect north, let's say east, where there was no obstructions. It changed to east, northeast, which was a big ass tree that I had to go and cut down part of it. Thank you, appreciate that SpaceX. Now the dish is still pointing to the east, northeast, which would be over the ocean. But what has changed is its angle. Now, originally it was sitting back at right around, let's say 130 degrees, somewhere right on there, with 180 degrees being flat, right? 130 degrees would be somewhere like about this. So let's call it a total of 50 degrees off its base. If you wanna look at it this way or the other way, it would be 130 degrees back, sitting back like this, pointing up. Now what has changed is this angle is now almost straight up. I would say it's right around 165, 170 degrees. I mean, it's pointing almost straight up. This is very strange because this has never been the case ever since the very beginning. Once again, originally my dish was pointing north, northeast like this. Then it moved to east, northeast, which is where it is still now, but it was still at 130 degrees. Now it's still in the same position, east, northeast, but leaning all the way back at, let's say, about 160, 170 degrees. Very, very strange. Now, the question is, did this change anything? Did this change speeds? What has this done? Remember, this dish now on my roof is very similar to the placement that we see RVs and any of the mobility type of units. They're all pointing straight up at the sky, right? So I guess it kind of makes sense. As there are more and more satellites in LEO, what this means is there's going to be more satellites available overhead of wherever you are. So I think that this is very interesting. And like I said, how did speeds change? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you 
12 speed tests. I did 12, this is what I always do. I'll do like 10 or 12, and then I'll delete like the lowest and the highest, and then I'll take a mean, I'll take an average of them, and those are the numbers that I will give you. So if you take a look at any of my other videos, you can see what speeds I was getting at that time in comparison to now. So we're gonna get into that in just a second. Before I do, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, go check them out. They are 100% free. Go over to jcristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this content, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. Share it with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever. Share the video and of course, share the channel. If you are not subscribed as of yet, please consider doing so and then click this little button over here if you are subscribed so that when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button. You can give a dollar or two if you want. If not, that's fine too. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. Also, if you want more content that's specific to Starlink, I have a Starlink playlist. I'll put a little link here. Go check that out. There's about 165, 170 videos for you to enjoy. So go and check those out. So once again, thank you for your support. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. So I'm gonna pull up speed tests all around me here. There's gonna be 12 of them. I'm gonna just let them run while I'm talking. Now, instead of reading to you all of the final numbers, I will probably give them to you here or there or somewhere, or maybe I'll dump them into the pin comment or the description. So if you want to do your averaging or take that information and then use it for later, you can do that. Once again, I'll put it down there. I'll give you the download speed and the upload speed for each one of the tests. Now, I just wanna highlight the fastest and the slowest, because I think that's very important. As far as upload speed, the absolute slowest that I was able to get was 6.48. That's pretty bad, right? That's very bad. Now, the fastest upload speed that I was able to obtain was 20.89. So let's call it 21 megabits per second, which isn't too bad. Now, as far as the download speeds, I was very, very impressed with this. The slowest download speed I got was 131.85. That is still pretty quick. Remember, SpaceX Starlink says, we're gonna guarantee you as a residential customer, 100 megabits down, that's it. Well, I was able to get a 281.53. Let's just round up. 282 megabits down for my fastest download speed. That was insane. But if it was just an anomaly and it was just one, I'd be like, ah, okay, that's just one time. But I got 201, I got 256, I got a 184, a 234, a 227. There was a lot of 200s in there. That was amazing to me. I was not getting that before. So has something changed? Maybe. Well, if we take those 12 and we do an average, take a mean and then an average of them to see what we end up with, my average download speed is 195.03. So let's call it 195 megabits per second. And my upload speed average is 14.64. We can round up to 15 megabits per second. So 195 by 15 megabits per second. Not bad, guys, that is not bad. I really would like to see those upload speeds come up. The reason being is I do see during some times when there is a lot of congestion in the area, I'm seeing speeds that are under that 10 megabits up. And that's just too slow, in my personal opinion. That's not broadband, okay? But the download speeds are doing pretty well. Every once in a while, I'll get 50 and 70 and 80 megabits down, but it's very rare. It feels to me that SpaceX Starlink is loosening up the restrictions to the download, meaning that they are not throttling as much the download speeds, whereas the upload speeds, eh, I think they've loosened them up a little bit because I saw some speeds hitting like 30, 31 megabits and then doing this thing as it's going down, as it's being throttled. Um, so I know it has it in it. I know it can do 30 and 40 megabits like I used to get back in beta time, but they are throttling it. 
The reason being, there's a finite amount of data. If we look at the available data as a pie, and we take that pie and we cut it up eight times, and there's a birthday party and 10 people show up, but remember, we only have eight slices. What has to happen? We have to take two of those slices and cut them in half so that these other folks that came into the party can actually have a piece of pie. So this is the problem. There is always a finite amount of data available and then SpaceX has to figure out how to divvy it up. Hence, that's why we end up seeing not data caps, but that's why we see throttling. If we don't throttle, we're not going to be able to get data to everyone. Someone is going to go without pie. They don't want people to go without pie. They would rather have the majority of people going a little bit slower so this way everyone has a piece. That's great and all, but the thing is, is as a broadband customer, I want you to make a bigger cake so that as you now slice the cake up, you can slice the cake instead of into eight slices, you can slice it into 16 slices and still give everyone the same speed. You follow me? So as SpaceX launches their Starship and we see more of the version 2.0 minis and the full size version twos up there that have four times the capacity, well, we're going to now have more pie, more pieces, and those pieces will be larger. So coming full circle, the question is, is it faster, Joe? And the answer to that is, of course, you can watch my previous video on speeds and my speed update, but it feels like it is. It is more consistently faster than it was before. It used to consistently be between 90 to 120, 130 megabits down. Now we're seeing 130 as the low and all the way up to that 281, 282 megabits down, which is amazing. And also in the past, we were at that 10 megabits and slower maybe eight, nine, sometimes seven, 10, 12, right around there. Now we're averaging up to 15 megabits. So there is definitely an increase. Now, is that because the dish is now pointing almost straight up in comparison to an angle? I really don't know. But whatever they have done in this new recalibration, Something has changed. Has the duty cycle changed? I've talked to you guys about this in the past and I was speculating that they were going to move from that duty cycle of let's say 7% to about a 14%, 14.5 duty cycle more radiation. But that duty cycle, that higher duty cycle of double means that there is a connection between your dish, Mr. Bevel, in my case, that connection between Mr. Bevel and the satellite will stay connected for, let's call it 14.5% of the time in comparison to 7% or less of the time. So you're not going to have that, not quote, retraining, but you will have that connection where it doesn't have to re-handshake, let's say. Whereas you're losing connection and getting the connection and losing the connection, you are wasting time. So the side effect that I've also noticed is the latency is slowly coming down. Where I was seeing latency of about 45 to 55 milliseconds, in some of these tests, you can go back and look, some of those tests are down to 30 milliseconds, 35, 38 in that area. So that to me is a big difference. I love to see lower latency. Lower latency is everything when it comes to internet. And if you can get satellite coverage with like 30 milliseconds, 25 milliseconds, that is awesome. Just think about it this way. My hard line, which is AT&T trash, AT&T trash, that hard line, that U-verse connection, gets me about 24 to 28 milliseconds latency. If I'm getting 30 with a satellite that's sitting at 550 kilometers, I'm ecstatic. Find out from Viastat or HughesNet customers what kind of latency they're getting. Not so good. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, found it helpful. Do me a favor. In the comment area below, put your speeds. What are you getting right now? Also, is your dish leaning back further than it was before? I don't expect you to go out there with a protractor and find out the exact degree. It's not necessary, but is it leaning further back, pointing more up at the sky than it was before? Let us know and let us know where you're located. 
Anyways, once again, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, throw it a thumbs up, share it with your community, do all of those things, click this button, and finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like, and if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. 